Reptilians, welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we're doing kind of a part two video to a video that I did a few weeks ago. 10 things I wish I would have known before getting a leopard gecko, some long signs. This week we're doing kind of a part two. So 10 things you should know before you get a leopard gecko. This is not a care guide. This is just fun facts. Some of it is about their care. So it's about them as animals, not a standalone care guide. Make sure that if you are getting a leopard gecko, you look into a care guide and also, if you haven't seen that very first video from a few weeks ago, make sure to check that out as well. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this super cool company. Let's get started. The first one and a comment that I got on that last video multiple times that I forgot is that their tails not only can fall off, but they can also regrow if they fall off. So this is a defense mechanism in the wild. Something tries to grab them. They they can drop their tail and that tail will actually continue to wiggle for a little bit after it has fallen off basically so that whatever animal is chasing them now thinks that they have them and they can not chase the actual leopard gecko as they get away make sure if your leopard gecko does happen to drop their tail you are making sure that they're getting enough vitamins and calcium make sure that they're getting enough food because that tail is also where they store all of their extra fat so them not having a fat storage could be pretty detrimental if they're not eating enough as it regrows. And obviously they're using more energy too to regrow that tail. That tail will not look the same as it did before. Usually it's no longer segmented. It kind of just is very bulbous and round and it won't move the same because it no longer has bones in it. The original part of the tail has bones in it. The new one, it does not. This is Percy. There's the bone and this is the regrowth of tail right here. There's no bone. The bone stops where she lost that piece of tail, but they will be able to store fat in it again. Next up, leopard geckos tend to have bathroom spots. So they will use the bathroom in very specific spots throughout their tank. Usually it is one specific spot. This is super, super cool for cleanup because it allows you to always know where the waste is gonna be. You can just take like a little pooper scooper and scoop that spot out, throw it out and you're good to go. Super, super cool. It also allows you to use things like leopard gecko litter boxes. Once you find out where their bathroom spot is, you can put a tile there and they can use the bathroom on that tile and you can clean that every time that you need to or you can buy specialty leopard gecko litter boxes which are just like cute little plastic things with a very small lip on it and they can use the bathroom there makes cleanup super super easy I always thought this was one of the coolest things about leopard geckos next up they're so soft if you have never held a leopard gecko before if you've never petted a leopard gecko before their skin feels like no other reptile I mean I guess they kind of feel similar to crescent geckos but still they don't feel like what you might think they would if you've never felt one and they definitely don't feel like what you would imagine a reptile to feel when you think of reptiles. Just a really cool fact. It has no usage at all, but just really cool. Leopard geckos can vocalize. This is super cool. This is not something that they do generally as adults. This is usually something that only babies will do. But if you do have a tiny little baby and you go to pick them up and they don't want to be picked up and aren't used to be picked up or they just don't like being picked up, a lot of times they will make this barky vocal sound that just lets you know that they are really serious about not wanting to be picked up. They don't like it. Percy never did this. She never made this sound. But Winter, when I got Winter, she was about six ish months old and she did this every time I try to pick her up and she would pee on me so they can vocalize they're not gonna be like toke geckos that vocalize their entire life but as babies they'll do this I honestly don't know if they lose the ability to vocalize as an adult or if they just don't let me know down in the comments below if you know the answer to that question I guess I could look it up but I'm going to forget after I finish this video so they will climb if given the opportunity now leopard geckos unlike things like crested geckos and girl geckos and toke geckos unlike those sorts of geckos leopard geckos cannot climb glass they don't have the sticky pads on their feet in order to allow them to climb the glass but but they will climb rocks or textured backgrounds if you have them they'll climb their hides if you put driftwood in their tanks they'll climb it make sure that these things aren't like crazy high up there just in case they fall we don't want any lever geckos getting injured but giving them small services to climb up like their hides is helpful for them they like that they like to climb a little bit leopard geckos lick 
everything. This is kind of the case with most reptiles. Reptiles have something called a Jacobson's organ, the roof of their mouth that just lets them lick things and pull those particles in and analyzes those particles in the brain to kind of figure out what's going on with the environment, kind of figure out where food is, that sort of thing. So most reptiles are gonna do this, but it is just the cutest thing watching leopard geckos walk around and just licking everything and they're just so cute. Leopard geckos tend to have issues with stuck shed if not given the appropriate accommodation. So leopard geckos like their humidity to be pretty low. However, while they are shedding, they need higher humidity. And this is normally accomplished by providing a humid hide for that leopard gecko. There's lots of different options for humid hides out there. You can make one yourself using Tupperware. You can buy one. I just got a new one in that Amazon video not too long ago that I absolutely adore love that humid hide so cool so easy to keep wet without worrying about like algae growth love that humid hide however you decide to provide that humid hide they just need to have one in order to allow them to shed correctly and speaking of shedding issues one place that leopard geckos tend to have the biggest shedding issues is on their toes they have these long spindly weird toes in their shedding hood coming off in that coming off if they have not had adequate moisture the shed will kind of just ring around those toes and when that happens if it isn't paid attention to they can lose those toes and unlike their tails those toes do not grow back they just will not have those toes meaning that they will not have claws on those toes which means that it's going to be harder and harder for them to climb which is something that they love to do and if you do notice white tips on your leopard gecko's toes unless your, their toes just are white tipped percy has multiple white tipped toes but if you are noticing that shed is sticking around those toes get them in a bath or make sure that you really really soak down that humid hide and kind of direct them into the humid hide to hang out do something in order to help them also when i say a bath you're not like scrubbing down your leopard gecko you are putting them into usually a small container like a shoebox sort Sort of plastic container putting maybe this much water in there a tiny amount of water just so they can kind of soak their feet and then you're gonna kind of close them up in there and make sure they have breathing holes close them up in there for about five ten minutes make sure to wash them so nothing crazy happens don't actually give them like a scrub-a-dub-dub bath next up females can lay eggs even if they have never been around a male. This is another one that is kind of true across the board with reptiles, but it is something that you need to keep in mind. If you notice that your adult female is doing things like digging often, if she has gained a whole bunch of weight and maybe she's gained weight and she has stopped eating, those are signs to look out for of she might be about to lay eggs. You just want to make sure that the eggs get laid. Sometimes they'll do this even if they don't have eggs, which becomes very frustrating very quickly and they'll start eating again the weight will kind of come off and that's normally okay but if the weight is staying on and it's been weeks and weeks and weeks and they're still constantly digging they're still not eating then it may be something that you might need to look into further like going to a vet just to get an x-ray to make sure that there's no eggs that are stuck in there this isn't something that you really have to worry about as much with leopard geckos as you would something like a bearded dragon but it is something just to keep in mind if you have an adult female and the last one on this list is that male and female leopard geckos are kind of created at certain temperatures. Always such a cool fact. So a lot of times you will see baby, baby, baby leopard geckos being sold as they're a male and it'll say something along the lines of that they know this because of the temperature. This is because the warmer the temperatures that those eggs are incubated in, the more males will be hatched. Usually it's like all males, basically all males. And the cooler the temperatures, and usually in certain ranges, the more females. Again, usually it's all females but for the most part the cooler temperatures make females the warmer temperatures make males and if the leopard geckos are hatched at like a middle temperature that I, I don't know these temperatures off the top of my head then you'll have kind of an even mix of males and females but it's just super cool that's not something that you hear about often but leopard geckos are really cool and that just the temperature that their eggs are incubated in will basically tell the person if it's male or female super super cool but that is it that is all that I have for this video hopefully it was enjoyable and like I said if you didn't watch that 
first one, go back and watch that too. There's a bunch of really cool Lover Gecko facts in that one too. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is a super cool company that makes conversion kits for tanks that you may have laying around, just normal glass tanks to turn them into front opening tanks for your animals. Front opening tanks are just the coolest because they make your animal more comfortable when you reach in to grab them. If you do happen to order one of these from iHeartGeckos.com, make sure to put Els Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for continuing to sponsor these videos. As always, if you haven't already, please feel free to follow me on our socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. I finally put out a video last Wednesday of the Cave Gecko, so some Wednesdays. <laughs> this week's Instagram shout out is here and this week's subscriber shout out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing and commenting and sharing and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Okay. Something on my arm. This week we are doing a video all about this week we're doing kind of a part two video to a video to blah. This week we're doing oh, I'm sweaty. Got to 90 degrees real fast. Just a really cool fact. It has no just um that